thermal cameras are becoming more commonplace for the average HVAC technician, mainly because the price point is starting to come down drastically on these things. So on this video, we're gonna be covering the Hike Micro B20. Let's get to this. If you're looking for some more in-depth education on thermal cameras, you can listen to the podcast I recorded with Brent Lemert from Hike Micro. I will leave the link to that podcast in the summary of this video. We're going to get this out onto a job site to look at some applications we can use the camera in, but some physical attributes first. We have a 3.2 inch LCD screen. The tool itself is not very bulky at all. It, it fits in the hand quite nicely and the camera portion is not very bulky. We have a trigger here to capture our snapshots that show up on the screen. We have a shutter that opens and closes to protect the camera. It charges with a USB-C right in the top, just like that. And we've also got a threaded portion down here if you want to mount this to a tripod. And then obviously we have our wrist strap if you want to hold it with the wrist strap so you don't drop the tool. So let's get this out on some job sites and check some thermal readings. So we're in an old walk-in box and one of the cool things we can do with a thermal imager is to check the infiltration around the door. So if I put the B20 up, we can really see where that infiltration is. That red is a heat signature coming from around that door. So it looks like that door could be resealed and we could probably get some more efficiency out of this box in here. So there's a really good case for using a thermal imager in a situation like this. So we are out here doing PMs on a couple of chillers here. And I always check the crankcase heaters because we're in a colder climate and we're in winter. So it's a very important thing to check and utilizing a thermal camera can help with this, make it go real quick. So I'm using the, the, the Hike Micro B20. So what we're gonna do is basically take the thermal camera point it towards the compressor and we can see that that crankcase heater is functioning. So pretty cool stuff. We can use this for other things too. Like if we walk around and look at the functional chiller, the one that's actually running, we can have a look here at the tops of the compressors. They're warm and the bottoms are cooler. There's a crankcase heater on that one because that compressor is off currently. So right here we have a crankcase heater that's not on. Very interesting. And this one is on. Very cool stuff. So another great way to utilize a thermal camera is to look at an electrical panel. Right now we have some relays with some LEDs on. Those are active relays right now. So if we take the thermal camera, and again I'm using the, the Hike Micro B20, we can look at these relays and we can see that they're active. And what we can do is take those crosshairs right there, the green crosshairs, and see what the temperature is. So that top one's around 116 degrees Fahrenheit. And as we come down, we can check the rest of them. And they all seem to be pretty close together. Anything that's out of whack, we can obviously look at closer. But this is another great way to use a thermal camera is to get into electrical panels. One thing to be cautious of when you're using a thermal camera, especially when you have a reflective surface such as this, is you're gonna get a reflection. So what I've done is I've set the camera up for a smooth surface, which is 0 0.30 emissivity. So let's check this out here. So now I've got the camera up against that shiny surface and you can see my reflection there moving back and forth. So just be cautious of that when you're dealing with a surface that is very reflective. Here's a video of me checking this condenser motor on this condensing unit. And that's the other cool thing about the B20 is you can turn the mobile hotspot on on your phone and connect the two devices up and use the app and record and take images and save them. Here's another condensing unit and right here on the left hand side we can see that filter dryer and we can see the temperature across it. Very, very cool stuff here. And what we're looking at here is a copper pipe with a joint with tape over the joint and tape over the pipe to record the temperature at the same emissivity of 0.97 because the joint is oxidized and the copper pipe is shiny and reflective. So let me tell you exactly what I was trying to accomplish with the tape on the pipe on that last part of the video. So I was trying to get a difference between the pipe and the joint as far as temperature goes with the thermal camera. So because the joint is oxidized, and the pipe is a shinier surface, the camera can pick that up as seeing it differently as far as temperature goes. So what you can do in this case is put electrical tape 
around the joint as I did and around the pipe. So what we're doing now is bringing both surfaces to the same level of emissivity. Now if you look on charts, 0.95 to 0.97 is about the emissivity of electrical tape. So with the electrical tape on the joint and on the pipe, set the thermal camera to 0.97 as I did to get the same emissivity. Now we can check both of them on the same level playing field and we don't have to worry about their independent surfaces being different and affecting the camera reading. So lots of good uses for a thermal camera. The price points coming down on these things as the years pass and now they're affordable for many techs to carry in their tool bags. So if you're looking for a thermal camera guys, it's a good troubleshooting and service tool. Happy HVACing.